In 2004, a study was done involving two groups of mice. One of these groups had the germs in their stomach artificially removed, while the other had theirs left intact. Both groups were wired up and then exposed to a stressful experience. What they found that was while both groups responded to the stressor, the germ-free mice had a measurably exaggerated response. This sparked interest in a concept called the gut-brain axis. The idea that the microbes in your intestines vastly affect the way your brain and nervous system function. The link had previously not been made, but the next question was of course, could this have an application for humans? It turns out, it does, in a big way. There is in fact a war going on in your gut. The so-called good bacteria are pitted against the so-called bad bacteria. Now, who's winning this fight is of great importance to you. These bacteria can affect everything from mood to obesity levels. Both bacteria control important levers in the enteric nervous system, which in turn cause chemical cascades that affect all parts of your body, right up to your brain. An overabundance of the bad guys, for example, causes an imbalance that results in some very common psychological problems. While the good guys, on the other hand, can help keep us relaxed, they do this by releasing GABBA and stimulating the vagus nerve, amongst other things. This collective of gut bacteria is known as the microbiome. They live inside you, in symbiosis. You need them, and they need you. But just like you, they need to be fed in the right way. This brings us to a fact that has been known by most cultures for at least thousands of years, that what you eat shapes who you are. The food you put into your gut encourages the growth of one of these kinds of bacteria, and that in turn affects all the aforementioned things. Given these advances, scientists have identified certain foods that encourage the good guy bacteria, and they called them probiotics. Now you might think this is a scientific breakthrough. Well, not quite. These have been known for literally thousands of years by the Roman, the Vedic, and the Chinese cultures to name a few. Seven to eight thousand years ago, men of the Thracian culture, a warrior race, drank sour milk before going to battle. Marco Polo, the explorer, hailed the magical qualities of an ancient drink known as kefir. And one version of the Bible even says Abraham, a patriarch of Judaism, owed his long life to the consumption of sour milk. I say all this only to prove that this is not new knowledge, but medical science can be slow to catch up. Remarkably, many health professionals don't make much of this connection. Could this issue be an elephant in the room in mental health? Rates of mental illness are on an all-time high. About 9% of people are on antidepressants in the UK. In the USA, the figure is over 10%. There are now more than 50 million prescriptions of antidepressants in the UK in a year. And when these diagnoses and prescriptions are made, diet is usually not part of the protocol. This not only ignores our ancestral knowledge, it actually is unscientific. The nervous system, like any organ, is highly sensitive to the environmental and is absolutely shaped by what you eat. The probiotics of yesteryear have been removed from the modern diet in favor of other foods, and no prizes for guessing the kind of bacteria they encourage. Could this be one of the major factors in the mental health epidemic we see in the Western world?